Hey guys, and welcome to Provax. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly videos and check out the Facebook page. Welcome to part two of the mini series where we, where we will be going over the different classes of vaccines. If you missed part one where I talked about live attenuated vaccines, why don't you go ahead and click on this link right up here. Go on, I'll wait for you. Take your time. Okay, cool. So the rest of you guys are ready to keep watching for part two. So inactivated, AKA dead vaccines, are the next type of vaccines that we're gonna talk about, and they are pretty simple to remember how they work. It's all in the name. These vaccines take a pathogen, and you basically kill it with either radiation, chemicals, or heat. See, by killing the pathogen, the body gets exposed to the pathogen without the potential of getting sick. A great example of this type of vaccine would be the Salk form of the polio vaccine, this vaccine has saved countless lives and has prevented the need for the use of the horrible iron lung that used to plague children who were struck with the polio virus and couldn't even breathe anymore. Polio strain two is now officially declared eradicated by the World Health Organization, much like smallpox, but strains one and three still remain, unfortunately. Hopefully, if we can keep the vaccination rate high, we could eradicate these two strains as well. So let's make sure that people get their vaccines. So this vaccine type seems amazing, right? Well, for one thing, the pathogen is dead, so there is no potential for mutations to occur like we had with attenuated vaccines. Also, since the pathogen is dead, storage is much easier and refrigeration is often not needed. They can even be freeze dried and shipped overseas to impoverished regions that need the vaccine with ease. But like with anything else in the world, there is no such thing as perfect. Dead vaccines, unfortunately, do not elicit nearly as well of an immune response as their attenuated counterparts can. This is often why these vaccines need to be given in series with boosters often required. This might be an inconvenience for people in well-developed nations because they have to go to the doctor again and all that stuff. But for people in less developed places, it can really be difficult for them to go and see a clinician to administer a booster. These people often have to travel many miles and for hours to go there. So it's not as easy for them to go and get additional series for their vaccines. But these vaccines can usually be administered to people who are immunocompromised, depending on each case. Not, not everyone is the same, but usually they can be. So I hope you guys like this video. Like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment down below for ideas for future videos and any, co and any comments or questions you guys might have, really. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you can be notified when I upload part three. Thank you.